toward the development of a rocket booster for the Navajo II. Development status of the booster power plant, Air Force designation XLR-43 NA-1, is well advanced. The power plant develops 75,000 pounds thrust for 56 seconds minimum. Alcohol is used as fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. Here's a schematic of the power plant. The fuel and oxidizer are forced at rated flow into the rocket thrust chamber by a turbo pump driven by high pressure steam produced by the gas generator system. Gas to drive the turbine is produced when concentrated hydrogen peroxide stored in this tank is forced under a pressure of 450 PSI through a cobalt plated screen catalyst in the decomposition chamber. The chamber consists of two stainless steel shells which house the catalyst pack, consisting of 36 cobalt-plated screens. Gases from this generator drive the turbo pump, one of the major components of the rocket power plant. A two-stage turbine wheel applies power to drive the oxidizer and fuel pumps. Exhaust steam from the turbo pump is further utilized before expulsion by passing through a heat exchanger. Another important component of the rocket power plant is the main oxygen valve, located below the turbo pump. This lightweight valve features a three-position butterfly, low pressure drop, and compact size. Two main alcohol valves are flange mounted to the nozzle inlet of the regeneratively cooled thrust chamber. The valves are solenoid controlled, pneumatically actuated for positive control of fuel flow. 750 PSI regulated pneumatic pressure supplied from 3,000 PSI helium containers is used to operate the control valves. Reduced pressure is used to pressurize the alcohol, oxygen, and peroxide tanks. The rocket thrust chamber is basically a straight sleeve attached to a throat by a convergent section and flares out to form a nozzle exit. A chamber to throat area ratio of 2 to 1 is employed in this unit. The fuel and oxidizer injector is of the doublet impinging stream type, selected for its proven reliability in use with alcohol liquid oxygen motors. The fuel mixture of alcohol and water first enters through a manifold at the nozzle end, flows axially through the motor between the inner and outer walls, and uniformly enters the propellant injector, and then flows through the injection orifices into the combustion chamber. 6% of the fuel is injected through radial holes in the inner wall of the combustion chamber to provide film cooling which augments the regenerative cooling. The liquid oxygen is fed to the center of the injector and flows around the radial alcohol passages to the rear of the injector face and through the injection orifices into the chamber where combustion takes place. The 75,000 pound thrust chamber and injector combination was subjected to a comprehensive static test program to assure performance and reliability. Initial investigations were made to determine suitable ignition and starting conditions. In these tests, propellant tanks located in the large test stand are used. A gaseous nitrogen pressurizing system forces propellants into the combustion chamber where they are ignited and fired. More than 50 firings were made at 75,000 pounds thrust. Many runs exceeded 60 seconds duration, proving the thrust chamber assembly capable of reliable operation in the rocket power plant. To further prove operation of the thrust chamber assembly, the unit was mounted in a horizontal test stand. Firings in this stand have proved very successful and runs under various extreme conditions are being made. For example, early in May, two runs exceeded 90,000 pounds thrust and 60 seconds duration. Maximum thrust was 94,000 pounds. In run number 13, the highest known impulse, a total of 5,980,000 pound seconds was achieved. The horizontal firings are made at night to permit full use of the vertical stand during the day. The flame extends more than 100 feet.
On completion of the calibration stand tests, the thrust chamber and propellant injector are installed. Then the rocket power plant in its test firing cage is swung over to a large vertical test stand. A shipyard gantry crane on rails is used for this purpose. The test firing cage contains two heavy-duty stainless steel tanks, which provide a full supply of fuel and oxidizer for power plant operation. The entire power plant assembly closely parallels a missile configuration. The cage supporting pads are attached to a large calibrated thrust beam. Working platforms can then be swung into position. Firing of the complete rocket power plant differs from runs with the chamber assembly alone. In the power plant tests, the propellants are supplied by the unit's own pumping system and tanks. Thus, the rocket power plant is a completely independent system. In operation, the following takes place. After the alcohol and liquid oxygen tanks are filled, the propellants are pressurized to approximately 21 PSI. A separate igniter is used to initiate combustion in the chamber. When satisfactory igniter operation is observed, the main propellant valves are opened. During this phase, the propellants are under about one-tenth flow and provide even burning in the combustion chamber. This is called preliminary burning. Full thrust operation is initiated by opening the peroxide valve and allowing flow from the pressurized hydrogen peroxide tank to the decomposition chamber. Steam pressure is applied to the turbine, and in approximately seven-tenths of a second, the alcohol and oxygen pumps are at rated RPM. Simultaneously, the main oxygen valve is fully opened. Propellants flow at the rate of 2,600 gallons per minute to the rocket chamber. Firing preparations include check of instrumentation and control circuits, operation of the pneumatic system and mechanical components, and special items according to test procedure. After loading propellants, the work platforms are swung out of the way. In the control center, 500 feet away, the firing operator is stationed at an electrical sequencing panel. Timers and relays control ignition, opening of propellant tank valves, and the hydrogen peroxide tank valve. The operator presses the launch start button, and the unit automatically sequences tank pressurization, igniter, and the main propellant valves. Preliminary burning, OK. Main stage. North American static test program has proved that the rocket power plant meets or exceeds the design specifications. Preliminary design and some test work is now underway on a 120,000 pound thrust system for the Navajo 2 booster. <laughs>